So finally, uh, the last thing I think is worth covering in itself is pages. And that's because it's not always, it's not clear at first how many pages you should have, how you should structure that, that sort of thing. And also like the limitations as well. So in terms of recommendations and how I suggest you organize your pages and put them together is you use these five different constants. So first you have your cover. So that's the first page that when you go back to the file browser, you'll see whatever you've got in this particular file. So it can be good to uh, put this up top and say my first file. And if I then frame this, this can be the cover sheet. So when somebody looks at this file in the file browser, this is what they'll see. So you can put the key information, use it for statuses, that sort of thing. And that's very helpful when working with other designers. And even just to remind yourself what you're working on and what can, what's contained within this file. The next one is these two. So they're called final and prototype. So final uh, can also be called handoff sometimes. And I like to put that as the second page. And this is when you have finished going through your design process and you've finished figuring out what you want to build, how you want to build it, that sort of thing. This is the page that I would direct my engineers and other designers to when I want them to see what exactly needs to be built and what exactly is coming up next. And what I like to do is break that down as well a little bit. Uh, so this is what you would consider the, the finished page, if you like. You can also create uh, alternative versions as well. So that can be helpful sometimes if you want to indicate to people we've actually gone through a couple of key revisions and we want to build a version one, but here's a version two we might want to put on top. The next suggestion is a prototype. So this is when you have a clickable end to end prototype and what I might want to communicate to other designers, other developers, etc., may be different to the clickable prototype or the user tests that I'm putting together. So that's why I recommend having that as a separate page. Working is the next one. So this is where you'd spend the bulk of your time or where I spend the bulk of my time uh, experimenting with uh, a few different flows, a few different ideas, a few different ways to model something or to communicate something over to the user and to see if we can get to a conclusion and to a decision about what it should be. And this is good if I need to do some small uh, fixes and tweaks as well and update uh, things like we might want to change the, the type scale of its very early days, or later on, we might choose to uh, change the border radius. And we want to make sure that that looks quite right or update the copy, for example, before uh, moving that over into the handoff page. The last one I recommend is components. So there's another module that we'll, we'll discuss components end to end and in depth, but having a separate page with your components is very handy so that if another designer is coming into your file, they're not going to click on the working file and go, where's all the components or go into the prototype and say, you know, where's all the different bits and pieces and maybe over copy over the, the wrong sorts of things. So I have a few different blogs and things talking about this, about why this is a, a really useful thing to do. A long story short, if you have one page where you've created all the new working components or all the local components, it's good to separate uh, the two and put them together uh, onto the same page. So you can see clearly, here are the components that I've created that should be absorbed back into a bigger design system. And here are the local components that I've only used locally for this file in order to deliver the work and arrive at the decision. So that wraps up the first module. I hope that was useful, gave you an orientation in terms of where the different panels are and where it, how to find your way around Figma inside the design file, where to find the, the core tools that you'll need to use and, and how to use them, as well as the pages and my recommended uh, setup for pages. In the next module, we're going to cover the shapes and the tools and use them a bit in depth so you can see in a little bit more detail how to get the best out of those things instead of just dragging and dropping uh, the different presets. Hey.